Hello viewers, in the previous session we were discussing about water soluble vitamins. In that we discussed about vitamin C, a non B complex vitamin and also a water soluble vitamin B complex that is vitamin B1 thiamine. Today we are going to continue the same with the next vitamin that is vitamin B2 riboflavin. Before going to the vitamin B2 riboflavin, I want to inform you that you should notice that in water soluble vitamins, especially B complex, you can have coenzymes derivatives obtained from the each of the water soluble vitamins, which are uh, which acts as coenzyme for various enzymes during biochemical reaction. In this, you can see the two columns and in the left column you can see the vitamin name and in the right same its corresponding coenzyme is written so the thiamine having coenzyme thiamine pyrophosphate riboflavin having a flavin adenine dinucleotide and flavin mononucleotide two coenzymes and niacin is having nad and nadp pyridoxine is having one pyridoxal phosphate coenzyme pantothenate is having a coenzyme a and biotin May itself acts as coenzyme and folate is having TH4 tetrahydrofolate and cobalamin acts as co cobamide coenzyme. So this you should especially notice and keep in remind for functioning of vitamins, water soluble vitamins, these coenzymes are highlighted in the future vitamin topics. The characteristics of these vitamins is their solubility in the lipids or fat and fat, fat solvents, especially fat soluble vitamins. And uh, the water soluble vitamins is uh, soluble in aqueous media and also they are going to derive coenzymes. So let us discuss the riboflavin vitamin B2. Vitamin B2 chemistry it is having isol oxygen ring and the rich sources are dry yeast, milk powder and liver along with you can notice the good sources and the poor or fair sources. Even though cereals and pulses are relatively poor sources of riboflavin they provide about 75% of riboflavin requirement of the body because they are consumed in large amounts. So even the fair sources are very less riboflavin containing food we take but they are taken in large quantity they are going to give the required quantity for the body so the recommended dietary allowance is 1.5 mg per day and in uh, people burning 1000 kilocalories of energy the 0.6 milligram of riboflavin is required and uh, keeping this in the on the mind the 1.5 mg milligram is recommended for 2500 to 3000 kilocalories the energy spent by a person 1.9 mg per day for pregnancy and lactation condition coming to the function of riboflavin riboflavin is having two coenzymes if you see the above name riboflavin in the function of riboflavin the flavin name is underlined because based on this name only we derived the coenzyme name flavin mononucleotide f m n flavin mononucleotide and fad flavin adenine dinucleotide the riboflavin coenzymes fad and fmn are going to participate in redox reaction you can see underlined red means reduction ox means oxidation so redox reaction means reduction and oxidation reactions in the energy productions of uh, metabolic pathways of carbohydrate lipids and proteins whenever you come across metabolism of these biomolecules during redox reactions these coenzymes are utilized by certain enzymes the riboflavin coenzymes participate in the tissue protein building and cell respiration so to build up the body proteins and also for cell or respiration the coenzymes are very essential riboflavin coenzymes 
and this also helps in conversion of tryptophan amino acid to niacin niacin is also a vitamin and hence this vitamin is helping for the production of another vitamin and its name is niacin you can come across this niacin in the next vitamin topic so niacin is derived from tryptophan amino acid for this conversion vitamin b2 is essential coming to the coenzymes involved reactions first we are going to discuss about fmn dependent uh, reaction and second we will discuss about fad dependent reaction in this examples you can just uh, go through the reaction of amino acids metabolism where it is undergoing oxidase reaction to form alpha keto acid with the release of uh, ammonia in this amino acid oxidase enzyme is utilizing below the arrow mark you can see coenzyme fmn and that fmn is taking out hydrogen from the amino acid that means amino acid is losing h that means it is undergoing oxidation and fmn is getting hydrogen that is it is getting reduced so in this same reaction you can see amino acid undergoing oxidation and fmn undergoing reduction and hence this is a coupled reaction called as redox reaction one is getting reduced and another one is getting oxidized and this fmn is derived from riboflavin so similarly the fabd enzyme you can see in this also amino acid is the same you can see amino acid oxidase certain will amino acid oxidase will utilize the fmn in this above you can see l amino acid oxidase utilizes fmn and in this the amino acid oxidase is same but you can see in the front of it it is the d amino acid oxid amino acid oxidase so for d amino acid oxidase it will utilize fad coenzyme this the succinate dehydrogenase example is a very important because it it will be coming in a citric acid cycle the succinate is converted to fumarate one of the step in citric acid or craft cycle the succinate dehydrogenase is involved in this reaction it is utilizing fad and getting converted to fads2 here also succinate is getting oxidized by removal of hydrogen and that hydrogen is taken by fad getting converted to fads2 so reduction and oxidation both are occurring in this reaction so this is about fad and fmn coenzyme involved reaction which are riboflavin coenzymes coming to the deficiency of uh, vitamin b2 riboflavin if you take less than the normal requirement that means as we have discussed the normal requirement you can see here 1.5 mg per day for adult person if you take less than this uh, amount then for a certain period of time then it will cause us a deficiency called as arabinoflavinosis it is characterized by glossitis that is soreness of tongue and magenta colored tongue chilosis fissuring of the lips the lips will get broken and bleeding takes place angular stomatitis fissuring at the corner of the mouth and uh, in the corner you can see the opening of the mouth and then pain and also seborrheic dermatitis derma means skin inflammation of the skin corneal vascularization cornea is related to eyes that means reddening of the eye and uh, photophobia that means fear for the light takes place that is photophobia redness and burning sensation in the eyes whatever the listed the symptoms are there written in the text it is going to be shown with a illustration you can see here this uh, whatever we have studied chilosis reddening of the eye or dermatitis or glossitis it is shown with the picture so that you can get a clear idea so this is about arabinoflavinosis next is we are going to discuss about another vitamin after b2 we are going to discuss about vitamin b3 that is called as niacin the niacin is having a period in the ring and the sources of niacin is yeast legumes whole grains green vegetables meat are the good source but niacin is not obtained directly if you see the underlined uh, 1 mg equivalent of niacin can be generated from 60 mg of tryptophan so tryptophan is amino acid which give rise to niacin so in the vitamin b2 also i told you the conversion of tryptophan to niacin is helped with the 
vitamin B2. So tryptophan, if you consume, it will get converted to niacin in the body. Recommended dietary allowance: the requirement of niacin is 20 mg per day, and uh, during pregnancy and lactation, it will be 25 mg. So 6.6 .6 mg of niacin equivalent is required for every 1000 kilocalories of energy. So depending upon how much energy your body is uh, uh, generating from the food or metabolic process according to that the requirement of niacin is should be taken. And for 1000 kilocalories it is shown that 6.6 .6 mg of niacin is required. Next is the coenzymes of niacin are NAD and NADP. So niacin gives rise to two coenzymes NAD and NADP and uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate that is NADP. The niacin coenzymes both of these you can see they are participating in redox reaction in energy metabolism that is carbohydrate lipid and protein metabolism and uh, they are going to get reduced and they will after reduction they will get converted to energy ATP by oxidative phosphorylation we can see in the underlying ATP oxidative phosphorylation this NADH or NADPH they are going to get phosphorylated reduced NADP is required for biosynthesis of fatty acid especially NADP is used for the synthesis process of fatty acid cholesterol and steroid hormones niacin coenzymes also promote normal function of skin the first one is skin second is gastrointestinal tract GIT and nervous system these three organs you should keep in mind because these organs require niacin for their normal function if you don't take niacin in normal quantity these organs will get affected NAD is also required for repair of ultraviolet damaged DNA in the areas of exposed skin so it also helpful in repairing mechanism so as we have discussed niacin give rise to two coenzymes NAD and NADP this is the illustration of uh, examples involving NAD and NADP the first one is NAD required reaction glycerol d3 phosphate converted to 13 bisphosphoglycerate this is the glycolytic uh, pathway reaction nad is converted to nadh and this reaction is performed by glycerol d3 phosphate dehydrogenase and this enzyme is consuming nad for its reaction and other examples are malate dehydrogenase and pyruvate dehydrogenase that comes in krebs cycle or citric acid cycle next one is nadp dependent enzyme example glucose 6 phosphate is converted to 6 phosphogluconolactone this is in HMP pathway and this reaction is performed by glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase NADP is converted to NADPH and this is NADP involved metabolic reaction and other examples requiring uh, this coenzymes are 6 phosphogluconate dehydrogenase and malic enzyme so you should know this you should Notice that these coenzymes are required for the enzymes function during metabolic process, especially energy metabolism and other related metabolisms. The deficiency of niacin, if you don't take niacin in normal quantity, if you take less than that, it will cause a deficiency and the condition is called as pellagra. Pellagra is commonly referred as 3D disease because you can come across three deficiency symptoms which are starting with letter D dermatitis that is related to skin derma means skin gastrointestinal tract related that is the diarrhea and nervous system related the symptom that is the dimnesia loss of memory dimnesia diarrhea and also skin related dermatitis since all the three symptoms are starting with the d it is called as 3d disease if you still don't take niacin in the normal quantity then it will cause for fourth d that is death and hence to prevent all these symptoms one should take niacin in normal quantity and uh, avoid the pellagra disease the next vitamin we are going to discuss in next session thank you